If you live in Massachusetts, you know that Patriot's Day is a state holiday celebrated on the third Monday of April. It's a day set aside to commemorate the opening battles of the American Revolutionary War, one in Concord and one in Lexington on April 19, 1775. Some of us spend the day off from work or school at the Marathon in Boston, others at the Red Sox game at Fenway, and some of us may just sleep in late. But if you really want to understand the true meaning behind this holiday and find ways for you and your family to celebrate it in a very memorable way, stay tuned for the next half an hour. We have some of the Acton Minutemen joining us, and they have lots to say about the Minutemen of yesterday and today, and they may just school us on what we thought we knew of them. It's going to be a good show, so stick around. It's 30 Minutes. Today with some of the Acton Minutemen, Steve Crosby. Thanks for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Steve Edwards, I know you, and Jamie <laughs> Powers. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. Okay, so um, I have been at one of the reenactments uh, in my youth when I lived in Arlington. I was um, I took in the Lexington Green reenactment mm -hmm. on Patriots Day many years ago. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. I, I had to get up at I don't know like 5 a.m. to get mm -hmm. a really good spot, mm -hmm. and but I loved it. And I think it was that feeling of excitement, um, the muskets going off. It was yeah. sort of this feeling in the pit of your stomach, and. Um, so when I heard that Steve, I worked with Steve, that he was and is an active Miniman, I really wanted to have you guys on the show to hear a little bit more about how did you guys get involved in this? And you, okay, the, first of all, the Acton Minutemen, <coughs> you do your reenactment on Patriot's Day uh, on the Old North Bridge. Yes. Okay, yep. so let's hear a little bit about that first. Uh, well, um, at just a little bit after uh, the time that the Lexington guys do their reenactment at Lexington Green, mm -hmm. we do our reenactment at the Old North Bridge in Concord. And um, in order to get to Concord, we march from Acton to Concord. Oh, really? And Where do you uh, start? We start at uh, the Isaac Davis homestead in Acton. Isaac Davis was uh, the original captain of the Acton Minutemen back in 1775. Mm -hmm. He led the original group to the Old North Bridge, and uh, he died in the battle there. Um, and so we start at his house, and we have a ceremony, and then we have another ceremony in Acton Center, and we march the rest of the way over to the bridge. And, um, and we How have, far of a march is that? It's about six and a half miles. Okay. And, and you're wearing this, yeah, we're wearing this. this. all of this we stuff. We the muskets and all the accoutrements to go with it. Oh, yeah. wow. And we have fifers and drummers uh, with us. Um, most of them are kids. Um, and we have our colonial ladies that walk with us as well. We have a, a whole uh, collection. Well, obviously, I'm not in the right um, <laughs> wear, so. Uh, not quite. No. <laughs> not quite. They I wear a little bit more. It'd be a little bit lower, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. And so, um, so then you end up at the Old North Bridge. Yes. And you do the reenactment there. And you have British soldiers that, Colonials. so who, who, who are they? Uh, they're they're reenactors just like we are. Okay. Um, but they portray the British. So they have uh, several British units just as we have Acton, this Concord, there's uh, Lexington and other units in the local towns around. Um, the British also have other units like that. So they'll meet us at the bridge or they'll be at the bridge. And um, the last few years we've had a, a group of us, um, a mixture of, of Lincoln, um, Bedford I think, um, mm -hmm. Acton as well. Acton historically would be at the front of the line and then we would march down the hill towards the bridge and we fire our muskets at each other. and. You don't actually have musket balls in there, right? No. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> not at all. We're not that real. In <laughs> fact, safety is always, mm -hmm. always a primary concern. Whenever we do anything with the muskets, you know, at any reenactment that we do, any event that we do, um, no live, no musket balls. And uh, even without musket balls, these muskets can be deadly. Um, How so? Just from the force and the fire and the flame that they put out, uh, if you're close enough to the end of the muzzle, you're going to get severely hurt. And so 
Safety. It's loud. I mean, it's it's, loud. it's very real, mm -hmm. and that's what I was yes. trying to say in the beginning. As I remember, mm -hmm. thinking, "Wow, th this <coughs> you felt like you were really yeah. there." Right. It's an amazing feeling. It's real black powder, it's so it's what you would use. And you can smell real, it. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. smell it. And it's yeah. a real musket. Right. Yes. Yep. You right. walk out on that field, and it really feels like you're on a battlefield, and and all the explosions all around you, and the the shouting and the sweat and the dirt <laughs> it's all there do you guys practice all the all the mil is there a mil like military moves that yeah. you guys practice and did you study these where do you yeah. where do you find mm -hmm. out about that sort historical of historical documents mm -hmm. you know uh, there are books that are currently published that people have gone and, and kind of dug up the old original drills and uh, and we do study those we do drill to those yeah so we do practice and there's multiple drills as well so um, for the battles of Lexington and Concord um, we follow primarily the um, 1764 Manual of Arms, which is what the British would have used as well. Um, and then later on, we use the von Steuben, which is uh, 1777 and beyond. So when we do reenactments later on in, in period, we'll do the von Steuben drill. Where do you do the other reenactments? All over the place, really. Uh, you know, other places in Massachusetts. Um, sometimes we'll travel to Pennsylvania. Uh, this past year, we went down to Virginia took part in a big event called the Battle of the Hook. Mm -hmm. uh, there were about, I don't know, 1,500 reenactors there for that one. So they even built a house to burn down just as part <laughs> of the scenario. It was really? Cool. Yeah, it was cool. Well, now, where would that be, that you're going to build a house and burn it down? Who, who gives you permission for something <laughs> like that? Out in the big cornfield. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Is the fire marshal involved? Yeah, we were there. Yeah. 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 You know, they, you know. they set up a little farm, and they had some pumpkins and a, a nice split picket fence around the perimeter. And, and a two-hole uh, outhouse. Yes, the, the, the <laughs> outhouse was a separate oh, structure, and the, the British burned that down, too. <laughs> yep. But the, the Do you first guys have day, to use outhouses no. during these no. things? No. Okay, no. all right, that's a little no, too we, far. We get, right? get porta potties It's just one step up. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you there. Yeah, right. I'd hold it as long as I can. Um, so, so there's companies then in Virginia and in Pennsylvania oh, sure. and in New York. Absolutely. And so Every place where the revolution took place, mm -hmm. basically, where the Revolutionary War was fought, there are units. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> because the revolution started up here, and in fact, because it started on uh, April 19, 1775, that's really our purview is, you know, and that, that's, it's, it's so big here uh, in Absolutely. this area and in New England yeah. that we have more units in the Northeast than further south, but there are plenty of other units uh, further south of here as well. New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, uh, the Carolinas, Virginia. So when you go down there, are you the Acton Minutemen, though? Where the, is, is that a silly question? No, no, it's not a silly mm -hmm. question at all, no. The Acton Minutemen, actually, most of the Minutemen units in, in the area um, were somewhat dissolved or, or rolled into the new army that was created after April 19th, um, because at that point, we had to kind of consolidate and become a new army. Um, so the Acton Minutemen primarily, primarily didn't exist after that. Um, but there is a unit that, that we did some research and found uh, Simon Hunt's company. And Simon Hunt was a deacon uh, in the town of Acton and the, the primarily started from the, the town of Acton, but then later on brought in people from other towns for the unit. And that's who we represent when we do these other Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that did answer my question. It wasn't a silly question after no, all. No, no, no. So, no, there's Minutemen, mm -hmm. and then there's militia. Oh, is, right. is that the same? Or that's the, these are different. Explain that. They're similar. Okay. They're similar. They're because similar. I think when you're learning um, the history when you're young, mm -hmm. you think of yeah. um, a bunch of farmers mm -hmm. that you know picked up you know their muskets that they or their you know their muskets that well, they used muskets, um, yeah. to hunt or that's right. you know I mean and you think that they had no training that's right. and they just crossed that bridge you know some with pitchforks yeah. you know yeah. and uh, that's almost how it's taught in school at least how I remember it sure and that's not at all like it no. was no you know to, to some degree I mean these were these were farmers mm -hmm. and shopkeepers and you know masons and whatever they did as a trade um, they brought that to the craft of being soldiers, okay? Um, every single town had to have a militia unit um, to defend the town. That was mandated. And the difference between militia and Minutemen is that as tensions grew between the, you know, the colonists and the British, uh, each town in Massachusetts um, ultimately wound up having a vote to raise 
what they called a minute company or a minuteman company. What they did was they took the cream of the crop out of their militia units mm -hmm. and brought forth one unit called a minute company and and they were to be paid and it was mandated that they would train a couple of times a week uh, so mm -hmm. they were better trained than regular militia. Yeah. You can easily see how they are similar but that's where the difference uh, lies is that the Minuteman companies were sort of the elite. Uh, were they young, the younger the guys or no, not, not necessarily? Not necessarily at all, mm -hmm. no. Um, the, the minute companies, the purpose of the minute company was essentially to slow down the British if they, if they did attack or come out. Uh, enough that then the rest of the militia could come up and, and then fight. Um, it's similar to the, what the British had, which were the light infantry, and they would do the same thing. As, as the columns would march, the light infantry would be out in the front or on the sides. And, uh, and that was the similar role that the, the Minutemen had. Um, it was, it was um, about a third of the militia was what they, they asked the towns to provide for the Minute Companies. Um, some towns didn't even have Minute Companies, so Lexington, for example, they had a training band and they didn't have a Minute Company, they didn't split off. Even though everyone nowadays thinks they did. I don't so understand that. So they yeah, didn't have yeah. a cream of the crop, is what you're saying? Or? They decided to keep it as one unit. Oh, yep. yes. okay. Yeah. So, so Acton, Acton actually had three companies of, of men. Um, each company was around 50 men. Um, two companies of militia, one of minute. And hmm. the town of Concord had two companies of minute, I believe, and two companies of militia. They may have had more. I'm not sure. H how many mm -hmm. towns around here then had m minute men about? About and are they yeah. all? Most of the towns. Most. Did, and and does every town still have these Minutemen? Meaning, you know, the reenactors. <coughs> the reenactors. Not, not every, all of them. Not all of them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, we know, um, you know, Stowe has a Minute Company, um, Concord, more or less. Um, they're, they've been waning in recent years, but uh, Concord, Lexington. Um, does Westford? Westford does have Minutemen. Mm -hmm. yes. They're they're uh, they're uh, more of a civic organization. I don't I don't think they do the the travel reenactments mm -hmm. that we do, uh, but they do do a lot of local stuff in Westford. Mm -hmm. So how often do you guys travel then? And do you, is it do you have to travel? Do you have to go, or is it voluntary? It's voluntary, and, and it's on our own dime, really. So yeah. you know we have to pay for our own expenses. Mm -hmm. um, we do parades throughout the year, and we're coming up to our busy time of the year. Right, of course. Um, so almost every weekend we have parades. Um, so we do travel all over Massachusetts to do parades. Um, then we do have reenactments coming up as well, where we will travel for those. Um, so it's not just you know Patriots Day. It's kind of Patriots Day kicks it off for us. Right. I was uh, you know I didn't I guess. You know, I think the average person just thinks you guys go out there, you go on the Old North Bridge on, mm -hmm. on Patriots Day, and that's it. And mm -hmm. having spoken mm -hmm. with Steve and learned a little bit about, um, you know, I mean, this is really, a, it can be a year-long, oh, oh, um, lifelong, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. um, you know, hobby or interest sure. or yeah. um, pastime. I, now, I can tell you being the organizer of, you know, sort of the coordinator, uh, the point person of our unit that... Um, we do about 40 different events every year between Incredible. parades and ceremonies and battles and uh, just individual events. It adds up to about 40 and takes us right through every single month of the year, even, uh, even February, January, December. Mm -hmm. We have things going on all the time. Do uh, the clothing that you wear change with the seasons, or do you guys like sweat in the in the summer and yep. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, do you stay warm in the winter, or well, do you have bigger? A, a big a big heavy coat like this is nice and warm in the winter, but a big heavy coat like this is also a little bit expensive, and so uh, it's the only coat I really have. And so if I go out to say the Battle of Wyoming in Wyoming Valley in Pennsylvania in the middle of July, where it's 90 degrees <laughs> out, I am going to be sweating like a waterfall <laughs> and so yeah it, it, clothes are all wool there's some linen but they're all still hot mm -hmm. and, and on a hot day we'll strip off our outer layer and be running around in our shirt sleeves playing in our underwear but explain that playing yeah. in your underwear yeah watch out there yeah <laughs> explain that explain that well, well, well Jamie you, you're the historical expert no, um, <laughs> so historically your shirt sleeves or your shirt uh, was the, was your underwear that was what you wore to bed, that's what you wore during the day, and it was not to be seen by the public, really. And so that's why we have so many layers on. You'll notice uh, Steve has a, and you can see Steve's and both Steve's a little bit better, a waistcoat, uh, which is a vest, and okay. kind of goes, if you think about a three-piece suit, 
mm -hmm. right? And it's similar to that. You had your jacket or your coat, mm -hmm. um, and then you know your, your knee, bre knee breeches and your, your stockings. So um, yeah, there's, there's many layers that you're wearing. So even in the summertime, when you try to have looser layers or, or lighter layers, you still sweat. So did they? Did they? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say. And for really cold days in the winter, we have cloaks and mm -hmm. overcoats as well. Um, you know, capes. I have a I have a nice lined cape and darn it, and it you helps. didn't wear you didn't bring it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I would have liked to have seen it um, so in the summer though did they wear all these uh, okay. would they wear something lighter like this linen then? yes the linen yeah but still all the layers but yeah. some some of them would wear wool as well and you had what you had too that's the other yeah. thing so if the, if we were you know out fighting a battle somewhere. Um, and you didn't go back home, you know. You couldn't run to Target and no. like pick yes. up a. <laughs> and so sometimes what they would wear is whatever they had from that winter, and they'd wear that through until they had they couldn't wear it anymore. They'd have holes in it and sleeves missing and things like that. Right, yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Things weren't disposable back then. If something mm -hmm. broke, you fixed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's hear a little bit about then these the clothing that you guys are wearing. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you find? clothing like this. I'm assuming it's authentic um, material and who makes it? Where do you get it? Yeah, uh, it's it's mostly um, linens and wools that we we use. Um, and there are there are what are called sutlers uh, who sell them at events that we go to. They'll mm. set up a tent. That makes sense. Um, and sometimes you can you know you can try something right off the rack that they've made. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if it fits you, great. If not, they can tailor it. Uh, or you can have them take measurements and custom make you something. Mm -hmm. While you're there at an event? Uh, well, they would no. get back to you after a while. Yeah, no, would. that's what I mean. Yes. I know that they wouldn't make it at yes. the event. But right. what I mean is yes. you would get measured at the event. Absolutely, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And we also have uh, uh, this uh, a person in our, our unit, Samantha, yep. who uh, she calls herself the Stitch Witch. <laughs> and uh, she is fantastic seam seamstress, and, uh, and she makes... A lot of our gear now. Absolutely. Yeah. Does she participate in the reenactments oh, as yeah. well? She does. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Goes to the encampments and uh, yeah, she's uh, she's all in. <laughs> but Steve, you told me that you made that jacket. Yeah, um, there there are a lot of do-it-yourselfers in the reenactor community. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and hand-stitched is kind of looked up to as more authentic in some circles. Ah. Mm. Um, <laughs> yep. So I actually got. The pattern for my coat and the uh, the materials from it from Henry Cook, who does a lot of historical reproductions, um, and his, really his name is synonymous with the best quality you can get. Uh, so who, uh, he, who is he? He Henry he, Cook. Yeah, who is he? He's another reenactor, okay. actually. But yep. he, local guy. Or? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. But he also makes he makes his living on on doing that, making colonial clothing, and uh, and I mean he he makes clothes for museum displays mm -hmm. and. I always Things wonder like who that. does if, that. If you can get a Henry-made pattern, it will fit you well. Wow, and it'll I'm look authentic, and it'll it'll feel great. I'm yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had it done. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you found the pattern. You yep, made it yourself. Yep. And th this is this is Cochin and Phillips wool, which Henry gave to me and told me this is actually uh, Cochin and Phillips are, are a duo over in England who researched uh, textiles in the colonial British era, um, and this is about the closest. The closest you can get to what would have been worn for heavy wool at the time. It looks mm -hmm. great. So it, it's it's yeah, between it's that nice and cool. the hand stitches, it's authentic as you can go. I just need to finish it off and add my buttonholes. That's right. Mm -hmm. well, it's yeah, a lot of work to sew something like this. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys, you know, when you when you see you marching, I mean, it really is something mm -hmm. to see a group of you all dressed up that way, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's impressive. It really is. What you'll notice too when you see us marching at these authentic events is that none of us are dressed alike. Even here. I've noticed mm -hmm. that. That's interesting. All, now, why, now why is that? No, we just all happen to be wearing black or gray pants. Mm -hmm. These used to be black. Um, <laughs> um, and that's really just luck of the draw. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a pair of brown pants too. But um, these were civilian units. Um, they were civilians. They went out uh, uh, in their own clothing, mm -hmm. they did not wear uniforms. Right. This wasn't a regular army. Right. Yet, mm -hmm. and later in the war, uh, George Washington started to outfit his regular army with uniforms. But mm -hmm. militia and minute companies, they wore whatever they had mm -hmm. at home. So it'd be like you, whatever you wear on a daily basis, and then you just pick up a basket and go. I mm -hmm. couldn't imagine, like yeah. you know, <laughs> so fighting a battle. When we go to our, our uh, events and, and yeah. other places and up and down the eastern seaboards where we're doing 
events from later in the war, battles from 1778-79, later, later battles, uh, we'll often see uh, Continental soldiers who mm -hmm. are actually dressed in the full Continental uniform. Oh, yeah. um, okay. They'll go marching by in their nice pretty column and we'll, we'll be sitting like our ragtag band. Yeah. <laughs> right. We call them the pretty boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Men, yeah. I'll tell you, that. you got, you're, you're like boys yeah. always. Oh, yeah. So, uh, can you show can you show us the muskets and sure. and? Sure. Yep. I'm going to ask the question that everyone asks, even though I said I wouldn't do it because I would never <laughs> ask you guys this. But yeah. you tell me, people ask you, are these real muskets? Of course, they're real muskets. Yeah. All the time. Mm -hmm. All the time we get asked. Yeah. Okay, so. Well. So, the way a musket works, yeah, it uses black powder, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, I want to grab my cartridge box over there, or just grab a cartridge. We, oh, would, we have, have my cartridge box right here. There, there we go. So Steve's prepared. I have one cartridge. Yep, you said you had it. Oh. So a cartridge is, is basically a rolled piece of paper, and inside of it, uh, for, reena stand too, for the I purposes mean. of reenactments, okay. uh, we just have black powder in it. Okay. But back in the day when they were fighting, there would have been black powder and a musket ball inside this paper. Okay. And, and how big are the, uh, the musket balls? Were just little? Like yeah, the musket big? balls okay. were just, just size yeah, 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 big enough for that. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. Think about mm -hmm. the size of a mouse ball if you're old enough to remember before we had laser mice. I don't. What's inside a mouse? <laughs> oh, inside a mouse. Yeah. I, I was thinking of, oh, never yeah, mind. I was thinking a real mouse. Okay. That so went over my head. I remember the mouse balls, yes. Anyways, you would pull this out of, <laughs> before we started talking about oh. the mice. Oh, that's me. <laughs> pull this out of the cartridge box. Tear off. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you hold, you hold the musket like this. You tear off the top. Now you've exposed the powder. You pour a little bit in here. That's called the prime, okay? Mm -hmm. and this is the pan. This part of the musket is called the pan. Okay. You close this over it. Now that's trapped in there. There's just a little bit and there's a tiny little hole from there to the inside of the barrel. Tiny little hole. And you pull this around. You pour the rest of that powder down. Okay. And the last thing that would go down is the musket ball. Okay. Did, did, uh, what's and then you when I see them out, like, yeah, yeah you, okay, you there you go. The yeah. yeah. I remember seeing them do that. That's you really put neat. it down and you just let it, let it tap on top of the musket ball. And this is for every single shot. I was going to say, I mean, yeah. this isn't like, you know, machine gun fire, you know. And now, you know, this is time consuming. Musket. That's right. Yeah. Now it's ready to fire. Pull this back and watch here. You can see a spark. Yep. It creates a spark, lights off the little bit of Got powder it. that's gun in powder there. Got it, gunpowder in there. The yep. explosion makes its way through the tiny little hole Got and lights it. the rest of it off in there and there it blasts goes. the bullet out. That's right. So sometimes, sometimes, this will go off, but it won't light off the charge inside. That's a flash in the pan. That's oh. where that that's a term, term came from. <gasps> flash I in the never pan. knew that. Also, that's cool. Most people don't. If Steve no, shows, that's cool. when, mm -hmm. you pull the, when you pull the hammer back halfway, that's called half cock, and that's for the safety. Half and there's cocked. another one when you're half cocked. That's Got right. it. Yep. So if it goes off half cocked, yep. that's what I mean. That's, yeah. So it's, it's actually pretty simple yep. how it works, mm -hmm. but pretty unreliable. <laughs> I was going to say, too, you mm -hmm. can tell which guy's about ready to fire. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. um, well, you're hoping that you can do it quicker than he. That's exactly right. right? That's right. That's exactly right. Okay. Now, there, there, was, there was one legendary company of elite rangers, so the legend it's goes, a, um, that actually, in order to save time in battle, they took drills and drilled out the touch hole to make it much, much bigger than it normally yep. is. And then, instead of priming the pan, they would just dump the whole cartridge down oh. the barrel, drop the ball in, Pow! Bam! Uh, they're, they're bang their musket on the ground, and that would kind of shake the powder into the pan, and from there they'd be ready to fire. It would be quicker, it's and it, it would be much oh yeah, quicker much than quicker. pulling out your ramrod and, and tamping but everything down. But is it down. more dangerous or something? I mean, why yeah. didn't everyone I, do it? I would think that it would be a little bit less reliable, but I don't mm -hmm. know that for certain because I've never tried it. I don't want to ruin my musket. There's one in every yeah. bunch. I'll tell you yeah, yeah. that <laughs> the yeah. crazy one. Yeah. Okay, so um, why don't you guys tell me? Um, this isn't just a bunch of guys that do this. Yeah. This is families and ch children. Absolutely. Can oh, you talk absolutely. a little bit about that before we wrap it up? So if there's anyone out there mm -hmm. that finds this as fascinating as I do, and I really do, I love this, I, I really would like you guys to come on again and maybe, because I think that there's so much more to talk about. Oh, there is. But tell us how um, people can find out about um, getting involved in this sort of thing. That's a great, you know, that's a great question because, um, 
most people do think that it's just a bunch of guys right. going out with the muskets and shooting at each other. And it's so much more than that. Mm. Um, like we talked about before, we do encampments. Um, it's such a family um, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, after we do parades and ceremonies, oftentimes we'll go back to one of, one of our houses, you know, someone in the company, and have a barbecue. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have a number of kids yeah. of all different ages in the unit. A number of parents, um, and, uh, and, and there's a role for everybody too. So right. you know, for kids or anybody who wants to be a musician, you don't have to have you know a musket. Oh right, because I was going to say, drum. how do the kids participate? Because mm -hmm. right. um, if you're, you're obviously not just doing reenactments of right. um, war, right. of the battles, That's right. right? And kids can't carry the musket until they're 16. Okay, um, they're not allowed. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, fifers, drummers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and what do the women do? Well, we, in our unit, we mm -hmm. actually will allow women to dress as, uh, as a Minuteman. Oh, I see. Okay. But, but they would be playing the part no, of a man, we, obviously, yeah, because women that's right. Right. I mean, we wouldn't be muscle. authentic. Right. We, we allow that, but we, we haven't had anybody actually step mm -hmm. up to do that yet. Yeah. Uh, most You're of the tempting women, me. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> but we do have women who wear dresses, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they'll, they'll kind of play the role of a woman uh, mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, when we do to, go to encampments, you know, we'll, we'll cook over a fire. You know, right. we, ha we sleep in tents, you know, that kind of thing. So you have the whole life, as Steve said, mm -hmm. you know, so you would have women and children and, and people that would follow the soldiers. And we don't, we don't, when we go to encampments, don't get us wrong there. We, we don't make the women do the cooking and, and all of that. Everybody shares Absolutely. the camp chores. Okay, so you're not keeping yeah. it authentic. It's not like when right. you go no. to Plymouth Plantation or Sturbridge Village where, they're, where they stay in character through the whole time that they're working. This isn't work. Yeah. This is a no. weekend away with a bunch of people that mm -hmm. in, right. enjoy the the same um, interest and the history That's right. behind it all. That's right. It's and a hobby is what it comes down to. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And when we're dealing with the public, uh, we don't we don't necessarily <clears throat> uh, sort of port portray that we are have just stepped out of a time machine from the 1700s. Mm -hmm. We talk to them as reenactors. Like and we're say, talking right now. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, like, for instance, I have facial hair. Jamie has facial hair. I have? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and back in the 1700s, they did not have facial hair. Okay. And at some events, they require us to shave, mm -hmm. clean shaven, which some, some of the guys just don't want to do. And, uh, so Duck Dynasty guys, they couldn't no. do them? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thank no. God. No. Okay. <laughs> so when we talk to the public, we... we we try to basically say, this is how it was back then. Right. So, you know, suspend reality just for a couple of minutes and, and pretend that we don't, you know, don't have any beards or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and some units are very strict and uh, do require their, you know. Do you know the yes. Yankees make all their players be very clean shaven? So they're kind of, there's, yeah. there, there are okay. some Yankee. Yes. yes. Yankees. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Absolutely. there you go. And that's okay, too. Yeah. Yuke when he went to the... Or right, or he had to shave, right. he Eucalypt. had to shave. Yeah, same yeah. with uh, Damon, he had to cut his hair. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. But anyway, we digress. So uh, quickly though, again, if somebody wanted to, you explain that it can be a family event, but how can somebody mm -hmm. find out more about the Acton Minutemen yeah. or any Minuteman company? Go to our website, okay. www.actonminutemen.org okay. and contact us or just talk to us at one of our events. Mm -hmm. Our calendar is on there. And all the events that we do is on there. Okay, I was going to say that, so they can find all the upcoming events on, on there as well. And Patriots Day this month, uh, busy Very month for busy. you guys. Yeah. Busy month. So yes. I appreciate you coming on mm -hmm. the show. So Steve Crosby, captain mm -hmm. of yeah. the Acton Minutemen. Captain for life. Captain for life. <laughs> all right. <laughs> kind of no. like when you're a member of the Grand no Old way. Opry. You're <laughs> a member of the Grand Old Opry for life. No. Okay. Um, and Steve Edwards, mm -hmm. thank you, and Jamie Powers. Thank okay. You. So thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. All right. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for watching. And please stay tuned for another 30 minutes. Mm -hmm.